Greetings, Wasteland Adventurers! Today we'll be exploring the lore of every known country mentioned in the Fallout universe. We'll begin with the Soviet Union, often interchangeably referred to as Russia in Fallout. It stood as a formidable communist superpower before the Great War in the 20th century and was engaged in a space race with the United States. According to a placard in the Museum of Technology in Fallout 3, Captain Carl Bell, a US astronaut, is credited as being the first human in space on board the space capsule Defiance 7. This, however, had been constantly refuted by the Soviet Union, which asserted that they were the first to achieve this feat. By the 21st century, China was considered a much greater threat to the United States than the Soviet Union. However, the two communist powers were considered natural allies and were often referred to together as the Red Menace. After the outbreak of the Sino-American War, the possibility of a joint nuclear strike by the Soviets and China was considered as a viable option by US defense analysts. Ham in Fallout 4 was used to determine the likelihood of this outcome six months into the invasion of Alaska. The Soviets were also engaged in human mutation experiments that inspired similar research in America. Michael Masters, an electronic and biological engineer, was involved in these experiments before the bombs fell. This suggests the possibility of super mutants or similar creatures existing in post-war Russia. Interestingly, the relationship between the United States and the Soviet Union was more nuanced than it initially appeared. Despite the apparent hostilities between the two, a Soviet diplomat from the Soviet consulate in Los Angeles was accepted as a resident of Vault 13 in the midst of the Sino-American War, ultimately surviving the Great War. Natalia Dabrowski, an inhabitant of Vault 13 in 2161 and one of the three pre-made player characters available during character creation in Fallout 1 is the granddaughter of this Russian diplomat. The country's remains were meant to appear in Interplay's cancelled Fallout Extreme, where players would have traversed the Bering Strait and ventured through Russia into China. The region was envisioned to be a cold Siberian wasteland, inhabited by Russian Cossacks, and would have featured abandoned oil refineries, Russian steppe villages, and re-education colonies. Russia or the Soviet Union also maintained spy networks within the US. In Fallout 76, there were plans for a top-secret Soviet spy ring featuring a Soviet Mr. Handy who would assign missions and offer a training program to prepare players for secret operations in service of Mother Russia. Soviet citizens were also involved in American organized crime. In Boston, crime boss Eddie Winter employed a Russian hitman named Alexander Strelnikov to assassinate Ron Trevio. And in Fallout 76, Lev, a former mobster who immigrated to the United States from the Soviet Union before the Great War, can be found as a member of the Crater Raiders. From Russia before the war, but I like it here. Americans are so soft! Such easy prey! One of the astonishingly awesome Tales magazines features a stereotypical depiction of a drunk Russian guy riding a cool-looking cyborg bear, showcasing the cultural portrayal of Russians within Fallout. The Surkov brand vodka, present in both Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, is marketed as imported directly from Russia. This suggests that international trade between the United States and Russia was still occurring before the Great War. In Fallout Tactics, the description of the Scorpio machine pistol mentions it's used by members of the Spetsnaz, while the AK-47's description describes it as the favorite weapon of Soviet armies. It's not quite clear though whether these weapons were imported from the Soviet Union or if they were locally manufactured. In Fallout New Vegas, Nobark Noonan mentions Lenin when discussing the activities of ghouls at the Repcon test site. Ghosts. Kami ghosts who don't know they're dead, hoping to steal our rockets so they can fly up and paint the moon pink and draw a Lenin face on it. And at Helios 1, a terminal entry mentions the Red Square, while another terminal entry at the wastewater treatment plant mentions the Kremlin. If you listen closely to the Vault of the Future theme from Fallout 1, Russian murmuring and whispering can be heard in the background. 
It says the report examined the evolution of nuclear arsenals and socio-psychological problems of the arms race. The sample was apparently taken from a news program of USSR's first channel from around 1985. In the Fallout universe, most European countries are part of the European Commonwealth, a political union formed sometime before 2052. This union engaged in a decade-long war with the Middle East to lay claim to its oil fields, resulting in limited nuclear exchanges. Eventually, as the oil fields ran dry and the conflict ended, both sides were left in ruin. Subsequently, the Commonwealth began to dissolve, as many countries withdrew from the union. One of these countries was the United Kingdom, consisting of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Just like the rest of the European states, the UK experienced economic collapse and was likely targeted by direct nuclear strikes due to its possession of nuclear weapons. Despite that, people there did survive the Great War, one of them being Alistair Tenpenny, who not only survived but was able to travel across the North Atlantic Ocean to the capital wasteland to seek wealth and better opportunities. This suggests that the UK may be in an even worse state than the US. Other immigrants from the UK found in Fallout games include Desmond Lockhart, the pre-war ghoul residing in the Calvert Mansion in the Point Lookout DLC. While it's not outright confirmed any where he is hinted at to be from the UK, McRae, the guard who stands outside the Blades hideout in the downtown area of the Boneyard, he claims to be from Scotland, and Johnny Weston, who mentions his origins may be from the country and is able to do an English accent. A fisherman named Kai in the Far Harbor DLC claims his family hails from Yorkshire. The family legend has it we hail from Yorkshire. Not entirely sure where that is. Capital Wasteland, maybe? In Fallout Tactics, Sharon, a Brotherhood recruit, claims her mother can trace their bloodline all the way back to Essex, England. And Martin, another Brotherhood recruit, apparently has an ancestor who once ran a software company in England that ended up going out of business. Also in Tactics, you can obtain two very British weapons, the Sten Gun and the Bren Gun, both developed during World War II. The Mr. Handy Bartender, the Third Rail, Whitechapel Charlie, is named after Whitechapel, a district in London. He also has a British flag on his chassis and wears a bowler hat. Additionally, he's programmed to have an alternative Cockney accent. Is this your place? What? Ah, God. Place is Hancock's. Oh, Charlie just keeps the floor clean. The drink's dirty. <laughs> Other references to the country include the Sacred Head of the Vault Dweller Special Encounter, where Stonehenge is mentioned, an ancient ring of standing stones in England, a plaque at the Wixen Shovel Museum that mentions the British shovel fighters who fought during the Revolutionary War, the HMS Pinafore, a British comic opera heard sung by the Courier's Brain in the Old World Blues DLC, a British tar is a soaring soul, as free as a mountain bird. A copy of Magna Carta that can be found in the National Archives in Fallout 3, the Protectron playing button Gwinnett mentioning the tyranny of King George III of Great Britain, and the Ark and Dove Cathedral that is named after two English ships that landed near Point Lookout in 1634, leading to the state of Maryland's founding. The town of Ipswich is mentioned in a holotape in Fallout 76, where a traveling coffin salesman from England talks about making his quota in Flatwoods. Be difficult given the uh, financial situation around here. Just need to remind them of our friends the Chinese. Ah, I'll be back on the plane to Ipswich within a fortnight. Germany. Despite the near total collapse after the Euro Middle Eastern War, Germany was still able to continue exporting its arms to the United States. Many weapons and Fallout games are actually made by German companies, like the L30 Gatling Laser, the MP9 10mm SMG, the G11 and G11E small guns, the CAVs close assault weapons system, and the P90C are all made by Heckler and Koch. Additionally, the PPK-12 Goss Pistol, Vindicator Minigun, and the M72 Goss Rifle are all described as German designs. In Fallout 76, the light machine gun is obviously based on the MG-42 German machine gun, introduced at the later half of World War II. 
the German company Donaustahl made 9mm parabellum rounds found in Fallout 1-2 in New Vegas. Sadly, not much is known about the fate of Germany after the bombs fell. The only images that appear showing the country are from 1945, featuring pictures of Berlin, Waldenburg, and the Ludendorff Bridge. In Fallout 3, the insane Voltex scientist Stanislaus Braun is from Krona, a town in Upper Franconia, Germany. And in Fallout 4, in the Wixen Shovel Museum, the city of Dusseldorf is mentioned as part of a pre-war movie title, The Ditch Diggers of Dusseldorf. The language spoken by the Dead Horse tribe in the Honest Hearts DLC incorporates elements of the German language. This is because apparently, Zion National Park had a substantial population of German tourists at the time of the nuclear apocalypse. The town of Helvetia in Fallout 76 was partially settled by German immigrants in the 1800s. Various references to the country exist there, including a painting with the phrase, Home is where the heart is, written in German. Finally, music composed by several German artists such as Johann Bach, Richard Wagner, and Gerhard Tried is prominently featured throughout the Fallout series, still played on radio stations like the Galaxy News Radio. Switzerland Switzerland remains relatively mysterious in the Fallout universe. The country's renowned neutrality in foreign affairs was so pronounced that even centuries after the Great War, people still make jokes about it. Neutrality, baby. That's today's lesson. Top our own capital counselor. Maybe that vault door leads to Switzerland. Anyway, he's at it again. It's possible that due to its neutrality and mountainous landscape, Switzerland was spared much of the destruction and devastation witnessed in the rest of Europe. In 1869, a group of Swiss immigrants, along with German immigrants, settled in West Virginia, founding the town of Helvetia. Further immigration from Switzerland and other parts of the country increased the population to 308 by 1875. The name Helvetia is an old name for Switzerland that dates back to the 17th century to the old Swiss Confederacy of the early modern period. Also in Fallout 76, the Master of Ceremonies Mr. Handy claims that he has a Swiss watch, saying that it's very reliable. It's a Swiss watch. Very reliable. <laughs> the P-226 Sauer from Fallout Tactics is described as a Swiss-designed pistol, while the Sig Sauer 14mm auto pistol from Fallout 2 is said to be imported to the United States in limited quantities, although it's not specified whether it was from Switzerland. Lastly, Stanislaus Braun in Vault 112 ran a simulation set in a ski resort in the Swiss Alps called Slalom Chalet before Tranquility Lane. He spent 23 years in it. Austria The Glock 86 in Fallout 1 and 2 was designed before the Great War by an artificial intelligence named after Gaston Glock, the founder and influential engineer of the pre-war firearms company Glock, based in Austria. Gaston Glock, an Austrian engineer born in 1929, had long passed away by the time of the Great War. However, by the mid to late 21st century, an artificial intelligence bearing his name was utilized by his company to design advanced weapons, such as the Glock 86 plasma pistol. This suggests that Austria may have been a highly technologically advanced country in the Fallout timeline, at least before the bombs fell. The Stair, a pre-war assault rifle appearing in Fallout Tactics, was also invented in Austria. Not much else is known about the country. Italy The only mention of mainland Italy comes from Giuseppe della Ripa in Fallout 76, a character who was born there and immigrated to the United States shortly before the Great War. When speaking with him, he expresses profound sadness over his inability to return to his homeland and shares concerns about its condition after the bombs. Ah, I believe in your language. It is simply Italy. I was born there. I remember very little of it. There's still a connection. I think there's something that binds you to where your ancestors are from. What makes it worse is knowing I can never go back. That, and not knowing what Italy's fate was after the bombs, who knows what it looks like now?
As evidenced by immigrants like Giuseppe, echoes of Italy's historical emigration persisted in the 21st century, with Italians continuing their journey to the United States, carrying with them their rich culture and tantalizing cuisine. These migrants left a lasting mark on American society, among them siblings like Quintino and Concerta Lombardi, who hailed from a conservative village near Naples and forged a legacy in Atlantic City. Here they established a formidable Lombardi crime family, a dominant force in the shadowy world of AC, enduring even after the Great War. Meanwhile, another Italian crime family played a significant role in Boston, competing with the Irish mob led by Eddie Winter. According to one of his holotapes, attempts to cooperate between them ended in failure. Beyond its association with crime, Italian culture made a subtler yet significant impact on the United States. Italian cuisine gained widespread popularity, exemplified by eateries like Colantoni's Pizzeria in the Point Lookout DLC, or establishments like Little Italy or Graviano's in Appalachia. Italian language and style were often synonymous with sophistication and elegance. In Watoga, for instance, the sale of appliances skyrocketed after a savvy vendor reprogrammed robots to promote them in Italian. Tailored Italian suits, favored by the aforementioned mobsters, also enjoyed widespread appeal. The 9mm M9 FS Beretta and the Beretta 470 Silverhawk from Fallout Tactics were both manufactured by the pre-war Italian firearms company Beretta. The Pioneer Scout Archaeologist exam in Fallout 76 mentions the ancient city of Pompeii, Mount Etna, Mount Vesuvius in Syracuse. And Agatha in Fallout 3 mentions Antonio Stradivari, an Italian craftsman, when talking about the soil Stradivarius violin. Not too much, I'm afraid. It was fabricated way back in 1714 by a famous Italian craftsman named Antonio Stradivari. He had made a bunch of Stradivarius violins, actually, and each one was individually named over time to identify them. France just like Germany and most of the other European countries, France experienced extreme economic collapse after the wars with the Middle East and was most likely targeted with nuclear weapons. Esme Rousseau in Fallout 76 claims that her father was a talented chef in France before the Great War. However, she does not elaborate on whether she herself is from there or if she knows the current situation of the country. My papa was an amazing chef in France. And together, we would cook meals for Maman. Dinner time was our favorite time together. I had dreams of owning my own restaurant one day. But alas, that was not in the cards for me. Also in 76, scout leader Jaggy mentions the French language. Pioneer derives from the French word pionnier, which means foot soldier. And in a radio advertisement for Appalachian Antiques, heard on pirate radio, a fictional bohemian art show is mentioned taking place in France. According to one of the inscriptions on the Appalachian Liberty Bell, it was one of 53 cast in France in 1950. In Fallout 4, on a plaque in the Wixen Shovel Museum, Napoleon's ceremonial parades across Europe are mentioned. And of course, we all know of the famous painting of Todd Howard, parodying a well-known portrait of Napoleon. Furthermore, in one of Vault 81's terminals, Dr. Kenneth Collins discusses giving Curie a custom personality, drawing inspiration from his past romantic encounter during grad school. She was from Versailles, France. Multiple Fallout games mention three different wines from France. Chateau Montrose, noted as being consumed by the US president in 2077, Atomic Claret, and Chateau Lafayette. Dean Domino mentions performing in Paris in the Dead Money's DLC. And in Fallout 2, there is mention of a film featuring a French exchange student being produced by the Golden Globes in New Reno. Ireland Colin Moriarty, the saloon owner in Megaton, speaks with an Irish accent. He arrived in the former United States as a child after the Great War. Once there, his father amassed wealth through the nearby trade routes and played a crucial role in establishing Megaton as a trading hub in the area. Unfortunately, Colin's father perished during a raider attack in 2241, leaving his son to inherit his wealth. Similar to Alistair Tenpenny, it appears that the Moriarty's chose to brave the North Atlantic Ocean in search of a better life, 
rather than remain in Europe, or in this case, Ireland, which most likely was left devastated. In Fallout 4, the four-leaf clover perk icon and the Shamrock Tap House logo both prominently featured the national flag of Ireland. Additionally, the Irish Pride Industries shipyard is filled with references to Irish-American culture, which originated from the waves of Irish immigrants to the United States. Kate mentions that others perceive her as a tough Irish girl, and she speaks with an Irish accent, although her exact origin is not clarified in the game. Old Longfellow in Far Harbor also appears to be of Irish descent. He can be heard singing traditional Irish songs while idle. And Dublin, fair city, and the girls are so pretty, I first set my eyes on the sweet Molly Malone. The Eddie Winter holotapes reference Irish gangs operating in the Boston area, as well as a trip he made to Ireland, to Dublin, Galway Bay, Waterford, and Kilkenny. The lug bobblehead found in Fallout 3 and 4 has a four-leaf clover and an Irish buckle hat, a reference to the saying, luck of the Irish. In Fallout 2, there's a retired boxer of Irish descent found in the Golden Gecko pub in Klamath, John L. Sullivan. He references Irish folklore and has a distinctly Irish accent. And in Fallout 1, you can meet a traveler named Patrick the Celt. He is descended from Americanized Celts and keeps his heritage alive by collecting clothing, stories, songs, and knowledge of the Celtic history. Whiskey bottles found in both Fallout 4 and 76 are labeled as Irish whiskey, featuring the word whiskey written in the Irish language. Lastly, in Fallout 76, skis discovered in Appalachia are branded as Skiomatic, featuring a clover logo. Spain In the Fallout 1's intro, Spain, notably its colonial empire, is referenced as the narrator reflects on how the nation forged an empire driven by its insatiable thirst for gold and territorial expansion. Ada, the robot companion introduced in the Automatron DLC, states that swimming from the Commonwealth to the shore of Spain would be approximately 3,700 miles. Fancy going for a swim, sir? It's only about 3,700 miles to the coast of Spain. And Dean Domino claims that he visited the country's capital, Madrid, before the Great War, where he found himself entangled in a difficult situation. Belgium In one of the terminal entries in the H&H &H tool factory in Fallout New Vegas, Robert House's half-brother, Anthony House, demands that all employees of the company refrain from cohabitating or colluding with the Flemish, a Germanic ethnic group native to Flanders, Belgium, who speak Flemish Dutch. This may suggest either a pre-existing dislike for this group of people in pre-war America, or that Anthony House was simply insane. The FN Fowl from Fallout 2 and FN P90C from Fallout Tactics are both manufactured by Fabrique Nationale, a pre-war firearms manufacturer based in Belgium. Additionally, the Browning High Power Pistol and the M249 Saw, also from Fallout Tactics, are both described as being of Belgian origin. Poland Curie, the heavily modified Miss Nanny and potential companion in Fallout 4, is named after Maria Sklodowska Curie, a Polish physicist and chemist renowned for her pioneering research on radioactivity. Poland is also mentioned in a Neponset Park terminal, where Charles Dieter Jr. writes about a foreman who yelled at him, named Ralph with a Polish last name. And in Fallout 2, Ryan, a partially head-shaven punk in New Reno, refers to himself by the nickname the Polish Hammer. Many characters throughout the Fallout games have Polish-sounding last names, such as Kowalski and Romanowski. This suggests that, like in the real world, there was significant immigration from Poland to the United States before the Great War. Norway the wreck of the FMS Northern Star in Fallout 4 is inhabited by ghoulified Norwegian raiders who still speak Norwegian. Upon encountering the sole survivor, they become immediately hostile, shouting Norwegian phrases at them and each other. Du vil angre angre boss. La os vere i fred. Jeg kommer hjem. The ship itself is likely a reference to the MS Nordstjernen, a Norwegian vessel retired in 2012 and designated as a protected piece of Norwegian national heritage. Romania 
In Fallout 3, Justin, a member of the family, a gang of self-proclaimed vampires dwelling in the Moresti metro station, claims that the station was named after a town in Romania. Well, Vance told me that this place was called Moresti. It was named after some town way across the ocean in a place called Romania. The settlement of Arafu shares its name with a small village in Romania as well, known for its proximity to the former castle of Vlad III, the Prince of Valachia, famously known as Dracula. The Romanian region of Valachia is also referenced in the Pioneer Scout Gardening exam in Fallout 76. Greece most references to Greece predominantly center around the ancient Greek civilization rather than modern Greece. For instance, Arcade Ganon will mention Socrates, a Greek philosopher from Athens, when saying, In the words of Socrates, go fornicate yourself. Deacon in Fallout 4 makes a subtle nod to Plato's concept of the myth of the three metals, where he likens people's characters to different metals. Some dusty old philosopher thought people were made of metals that defined their character. And you, my friend, are solid gold. In Fallout New Vegas, the symbol of Caduceus, the staff carried by Hermes, in Greek mythology, is prominently featured on doctor's bags and autodocs, hinting at its association with healing and medicine. Archimedes II in Fallout New Vegas is named after an ancient Greek mathematician, physicist, engineer, and an astronomer, Archimedes of Syracuse. References to Poseidon, the ancient Greek god of the sea, appears in various aspects of the Fallout series, including an audio tour station in Appalachia and in the branding of the Poseidon energy. Finland the only mention of Finland is in Fallout Tactics, in the description of a recruit named Kaisa, who is of Finnish descent. Her character description reads, Kaisa is the last in a long line of gorgeous blonde Finns. Her family was famous for their mobile phones and delicious pastries. Kaisa continues this tradition by being an expert with high-tech equipment, but her cooking skills are totally unappreciated. Czechia Czechia is only mentioned in the description of the .303 caliber Bren in Fallout Tactics, where it states that it was originally a Czech-designed weapon. Greenland In Fallout 4, Deacon claims to have sailed the ocean for several months, traveling as far as Greenland. I sailed the ocean for a few months, made it to Greenland. Crazy story, I'll tell you about it later. And in Fallout 3, the country is depicted on a map in a loading screen. Japan. Just like in the real world, in 1941, during World War II, the Empire of Japan attacked the United States. At Pearl Harbor, this led to the US dropping two atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The pre-war Battle of Iwo Jima is also depicted on a mural in the Museum of Freedom in Concord. Not much is known about the state of the country after the Great War. Only immigrants or descendants of Japanese origin are occasionally found or mentioned. Like Grandma Junko in Fallout 76, who is a Japanese immigrant, she and her family immigrated to the United States from a small city in Japan known as Inzai. Uh, my family comes from a small city known as Inzai over in Japan. We moved here when I was young. Toshiro Kago, a samurai of the Oda clan, born sometime before 1562, during the Shogun period, found aboard Mothership Seda and the Nakano family in the Commonwealth, who all have names of Japanese origin, and Kenji Nakano has a Japanese accent. It's not quite clear whether they are descendants of Japanese immigrants, or if Kenji's father, Taichi Nakano, immigrated from post-war Japan. Some descendants of the Yakuza, the pre-war Japanese Mafia, inhabit the area around New Reno in Fallout 2. Perpetuating their expertise in swordplay and throwing weapons, they are known to carry short swords called Wakazashi and travel in small bands with no known headquarters. Local residents in New Reno are familiar with anime and may mention it when approached by the Chosen One in Power Armor. Also, Tokyo is mentioned in the title of the film Tokyo Decadence. A poster of it can be found in the Golden Globes in New Reno. Cookbooks on the preparation of sushi were popular enough before the Great War for some to have survived after the war. One of these cookbooks was found by Margaret Frimrose of Tenpenny Tower, who attempted some of the recipes with Marlark meat and served them to her customers. 
The Pioneer Scout Codebreaker exam in Fallout 76 includes Japanese as a possible answer to the question, which of these patriotic languages did our fine fighting men use as an unbreakable code during World War II? Additionally, the Pioneer Scout Herpodologist's exam mentioned the Japanese giant salamander. The Watoga High School PA system in Fallout 76 can be heard mentioning the Watoga High School's marching band's planned field trip to Japan. Students are reminded to encourage their parents to participate in the Bake Off Takeoff to raise money for plane tickets for the marching band's trip to Japan. And during the Unsolved Picnic Panic quest, Calvin Van Lowe will mention Kappas, a river monster from Japanese folklore. In Fallout 4, the Protectron named Takahashi speaks Japanese, despite not actually being from Japan. Takahashi. According to a terminal entry in Mayor McDonough's office, this is likely a malfunction. As a result, Takahashi can only say one phrase, offering people noodles. Taiwan. Taiwan is mentioned in the switchboard terminal entries in Fallout 4, where it's stated that sometime after PAM's activation in 2067, the Taiwan Strait region was destabilized due to the Pascal incident. Early iterations of PAM's code predicted methods for stabilization, which were successfully employed. This suggests that Taiwan may not have been invaded by China. The only other mention of Taiwan is found in Fallout 76's concept art of the communist power armor. An inscription on the power armor reads, Taiwan must be liberated by the People's Republic of China. Mongolia Mongolia was planned to be featured in the cancelled Fallout Extreme game, with the area inhabited by a group of raiders known as the Horde of Huns. This implies that the country may have collapsed into warring raider and tribal gangs. Genghis Khan is mentioned in the Pioneer Scout Archaeologist's exam, specifically regarding the fact that his tomb was never discovered. The Trans-Siberian Railroad, which passes through Mongolia, is also mentioned in the exam. In Fallout 1 and 2, the Khans and the New Khans were raider groups that originated from Vault 15 in New California. They based their culture on the history of the Mongol Empire. Later, the remnants of these groups rebranded as the Great Khans and settled in the Mojave Wasteland. A book titled Pretty Pretty Horses, A History of the Mongol Empire, was also found and brought to the region. Ezekiel, a member of the Followers of the Apocalypse, has some dialogue mentioning the Mongols as well. It's a history of people called the Mongols. I think that's what the Khans built their culture on. Vietnam The Vietnam War is mentioned in the background of the intro of Fallout Tactics. And in Fallout 76, Vietnam is given as an incorrect answer for one of the questions in the Pioneer Scout Hunter Badge exam. There are no other mentions of the country. India just like in the real world, India in the Fallout universe is considered a nuclear power, alongside China and North Korea, indicating that it likely received multiple nuclear strikes. This could have also been the case since most likely India was a rival of China and thus a natural ally of the United States. Brahmin, the mutated cattle with two heads, originated from India. They were imported to the United States long ago for crossbreeding purposes. They developed two heads as a result of irradiation. The name Brahmin is also of Indian origin, coming from the caste of people who tend to become scholars, priests, and teachers. In Fallout 1, the leader of Shady Sands and later the first president of the NCR, Aradash, is at least partially Indian, which is why he mentions Dharma. Please do not be offended if the gentlefolk about seem rude. As Dharma said, tough times tan the human hide. Dharma is a concept of central importance in Indian philosophy and religion, often meaning the right way of living or the path of rightness. This implies that his daughter, Tandy, is also at least partially Indian. The Dataplex 2000 smart terminal on the Enclave oil rig plays an Indian movie in Fallout 2. A patch representing the China Bruma India Theater from World War II is found on the Boomer flight suit in Fallout New Vegas. In Fallout 76, India is provided as a possible answer in the Pioneer Scout Mammalogist's exam. China In the Fallout universe by the 21st century, China had emerged as a formidable global superpower, rivaling the United States in terms of power, influence, and wealth. 
However, tensions with the US did not reach their peak until a century later, as the world faced increasingly severe energy and resource crises. Being heavily dependent on fossil fuels, the People's Republic of China was particularly vulnerable to these challenges. In an effort to avert domestic collapse, China initiated campaigns to annex neighboring countries and secure resources for its struggling economy. Although these efforts met with some success, they only served as a temporary fix to a broader issue, the nation's heavily reliance on fossil fuels. By the spring of 2066, the People's Republic teetered on the brink of collapse. Trade negotiations with the United States aimed at accessing its crude oil reserves proved futile, as the US showed reluctance to export. Aggressive talks ultimately led to a complete breakdown in negotiations. In response to this crisis, Chairman Chang decided on an ambitious and extremely dangerous plan, the invasion of Alaska and seizure of its natural resources by force. Chinese troops swarmed the state, with the primary push focusing on the city of Anchorage, necessary to maintain a link with the Chinese mainland. The Anchorage front line became a true battleground, lasting for a whole decade. Meanwhile, American infantry and mechanized divisions launched an invasion of the Chinese mainland in 2074. This included the Gobi Campaign within the Gobi Desert, situated along the border between northern China and southern Mongolia. The General Purpose Scout Rifle, bearing a distinctive three-tone desert camouflage, is named after the campaign and saw use there. During the war, China aggressively employed advanced biological weaponry, prompting the United States to develop countermeasures such as the Pan-Immunity Virin and later the Forced Evolutionary Virus. In the end, the Chinese economy crumbled under the onslaught as its supply lines began to disintegrate. The Battle of Anchorage concluded with a decisive American victory on January 10, 2077, forcing the Chinese to retreat across the front. The Chinese conducted extensive espionage operations within the United States, infiltrating mainland territories and establishing a vast covert network of spies and intelligence operatives. The largest of these spy networks were centered in and around Washington, D.C. and Appalachia, utilizing fronts like the Mama Dolce's food processing plant, where ghoulified Chinese remnant soldiers can still be found after the bombs fell. Furthermore, a Chinese propaganda radio station still continues to broadcast in the capital wasteland. A Chinese agent named Wan Young was involved in the Niagara sabotage in New York State, later winding up in Turtle Dove detention camp in the Point Lookout DLC. A Chinese spy submarine can also be found in the DLC. It appears the US military was attempting to raise the submarine, lodged in the shallow waters off the coast of the island. This indicates that Chinese submarines were actively operating in and around US waters before the Great War. As further evidenced by the Yangtze nuclear submarine found in Boston Harbor, also the Xinhuang T submarine crashed in San Francisco during the Great War. The surviving descendants of the crew settled in the ruins of the city and became known as the Xi. The remains of this vessel were used to help build the steel palace, and the ship's onboard supercomputer was established as the Emperor. The Chinese also attempted to develop their own version of power armor, but the project ultimately ended in failure. Consequently, Chinese researchers redirected their efforts and successfully created practical active camouflage technology, commonly known as stealth technology. Separate from the infiltrated agents of the Chinese army, China also maintained a network of spies and sympathizers within mainland America. These operatives infiltrated local civil society to conduct espionage while smuggling imported Chinese weapons. And even in 2277, long after the end of the Great War and the collapse of China, Irving Chang in Fallout 3 is still sympathetic to the communist regime. According to the design documents of Fallout Extreme, the game would have featured post-war China. The envisioned environment boasted lush landscapes, tranquil river valleys, and temperate regions with rice paddies. In its post-war state, China had descended into a fragmented country, ruled by petty warlords and their armies, who control and dominate most of the small peasant villages there. Scattered throughout our pockets of the new Imperial Guard, primarily stationed in the 
Forbidden City, together with the Army of the Golden Tiger, led by the Chinese Emperor, who seeks to unify and rule all of China again, and is building a massive nuclear weapon to obliterate what is left of the United States. Another interesting reference to China is the existence of plush teddy bears named imported Chinese pandas and comrade chubs in Appalachia. This may suggest some form of trade relations between the two countries. Multiple locations in China are mentioned throughout the Fallout games. The city of Shanghai is referenced on the helmet of a former US Marine, R.B. Vickers, found in the Honest Hearts DLC that suggests he was deployed there. He was also deployed to the city of Nanjing. In the March issue of Future Weapons Today, there is an article featuring the WAS-2000 laser rifle used by a Marine sniper also deployed in Nanjing. A Boston Bugle article titled China Showdown, The Atomic Ultimatum, describes conflicts spanning from Anchorage in Alaska to Shantou, another city in China. Shaanxi Province is mentioned as a possible area where Chinese stealth submarines were being built, although there's no concrete proof. Australia Unfortunately, Australia is scarcely mentioned in the Fallout series. Mostly, there are notable references to Australian wildlife. For instance, the Mammalogist exam mentions that Australia is home to a class of mammals called marsupials, and that red foxes are not native to Australia. The remains of a horned kangaroo can be found in Fallout 1 and 2, a unique marsupial predominantly found in Australia. And the entomologist exam at the Pioneer Scout Camp mentions the four-legged Australian termite beetle. Mexico Mexico endured a series of hardships, both natural and man-made. In 2042, a devastating earthquake struck Mexico City, and according to the Fallout Bible, leveraging its effectiveness in reclamation and disaster relief efforts, the Mr. Handy General Construction robot emerged as the top-selling product in Mexico, helping with the cleanup. By 2051, on the brink of the resource wars, the United States intensified pressure on Mexico to safeguard its business interests and oil reserves. Citing concerns over political instability and environmental degradation, the U.S. imposed economic sanctions to undermine Mexico's stability, eventually leading to a military intervention and occupation. This was aimed at maintaining oil refineries operational and ensuring the unimpeded flow of petroleum northwards across the border at the expense of Mexico. Despite these measures, the energy crisis worsened. The American public became acutely aware of this in the following year when a groundbreaking television documentary revealed the depleted Texan oil fields. As the resource wars unfolded, American energy corporations tightened their grip on Mexican oil reserves. Among them, Poseidon Energy emerged as the dominant force, controlling the Chicontepec oil fields in the southern states of Veracruz, Hidalgo, and Puebla primarily through its subsidiary, Petro Chico, colloquially known as an amigo of Poseidon Energy. Mexico suffered widespread devastation during the Great War on October 23, 2077, as nuclear weapons rained down upon the country. While Mexico City bore the brunt of the destruction and was reduced to radioactive ruins, it perhaps avoided the total annihilation witnessed in other areas, like Washington, D.C. or Bakersfield. The collapse of society plunged Mexico into chaos, with marauding looters swiftly seizing control of the former capital, laying the foundation for raider tribes. In the wake of the chaos, many citizens fled, seeking refuge beyond the now non-existent American border. Some found solace in remote sanctuaries such as Zion Canyon, escaping the violence that ravaged their homeland. The aftermath of the Great War left an indelible mark on Mexico's environment, mirroring the devastation seen in the United States. Radioactive fallout from control station Enclave contaminated the coastal regions of California and Mexico, inflicting irreversible ecological harm. Toxic waste saturated the western beaches, while marine life suffered from the indiscriminate dumping of radioactive materials into the ocean. Chief Hanlon in Fallout New Vegas notes that both Night Stalkers and Bighorners are present in the region. 
By the 23rd century, the new California Republic had expanded its reach into the former Mexican state of Baja. Despite the inhospitable and arid terrain, a handful of settlers endeavored to establish a settlement. However, clashes with the local population ensued due to territorial disputes. One notable incident occurred at Rattletail, where five NCR settlers took the lives of over two dozen individuals, attempting to access water from a well claimed by the settlers. This well served as the only water source within a 50-mile radius. After the intervention by rangers dispatched to protect the settlement from perceived raider threats, the settlers were persuaded to abandon Rattletail, believing in the imminent danger of a raider invasion. This led to the ultimate abandonment of the settlement. Years later, the new California Republic deployed its seasoned NCR veteran rangers into the former Mexican region. Chief Hanlon characterized this move as dispatching their most experienced rangers to chase ghosts down in Baja. Raul Tejada, a former citizen of Mexico, talks about the post-war period and mentions the Mexican gas station Petro Chico, un amigo de Poseidon Energy. You never heard of Petro Chico? Un amigo de Poseidon Energy? Uh, of course not. They were an oil company in Mexico back before the war. Rudy Fernandez, a client of the Blue Ridge Caravan Company in Fallout 76, comes from a family of Mexican descent who own a cannery and bakery located a few days worth of travel from Appalachia. Mi abuela's cooking was the best. She used to let me help out back in the day. She passed before the war, and we haven't made her pozole since. And in Fallout 1, a cut character named Michelle would have claimed to be the Queen of Mexico. In Fallout 4, a modern replica of a Neolithic shovel from Mexico is mentioned in the Wixen Shovel Museum. And in New Vegas, the unique hunting rifle Pacencia features a Mexican flag wrapped around the stock. Venezuela Venezuela is solely mentioned by a placard in Vault 118 in the Far Harbor DLC. The placard states that Ezra Parker, the con artist and owner of the Cliff's Edge Hotel, allegedly funded and oversaw the construction of the Cardoza Medical Research Center, located somewhere in the country. Peru Peru is indirectly mentioned in the archaeologist's exam at the Pioneer Scout Camp in Fallout 76, where the exam asks, Hiram Brigham III was an American explorer who went to South America looking for ruins. Which famous ruin did he reveal to the outside world? The correct answer provided is Machu Picchu, an ancient Incan city located in Peru. Argentina in a scene in Far Harbor, Gil Brosco and Keith McKenney portray a couple on the run from the police, planning to escape to Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina. Let's leave this dark hole of a city behind. We can be in Buenos Aires by tomorrow. The Bahamas the Bahamas are only referenced in a hubris comics terminal entry in Fallout 4, where Vivian O'Dell, the manager of the Boston branch of hubris comics, traveled to the country in October 2077. The Philippines the newscaster in Fallout 4 mentions the island of Mambajau, where US troops stationed there are experiencing some unusual weather. This is most likely a reference to the municipality of Mambajau, the capital of Comingan Island in the Philippines. Canada Canada, often dubbed Little America by many Americans prior to the Great War, stood as a sovereign nation in North America before its annexation by the United States on June 3, 2072, driven by its rich natural resources. The process of annexation commenced in 2059, coinciding with the establishment of the Anchorage front line in Alaska to safeguard vital resources, particularly the crude oil fields, from the threat posed by the People's Republic. Republic of China. With parts of the Alaskan pipeline traversing Canadian territory, American military units were permitted by Canadian authorities to provide security near the pipeline. Following the Chinese invasion of Alaska in 2066, escalating U.S. military presence in Canada exacerbated tensions, leading to widespread riots. Beyond guarding the pipeline, the United States leveraged Canada's resources extensively to support its war effort, despite Canadian protests. 
By 2069, Canada had become synonymous with Little America in the eyes of US citizens, with vast swaths of once thriving timberland decimated irreparably. The turning point arrived in 2072, as the United States intensified its exploitation of Canada's resources. The Canadian populace took to the streets in protest, riots erupted in multiple cities, and an attempted sabotage of the Alaskan pipeline, thwarted by unknown assailants, provided the US government with justification for official annexation. Upon the dissemination of images depicting the atrocities committed under the banner of the United States, unrest and protests erupted among the American public. However, the heavily armed nature of both sides rendered these protests largely ineffectual. Former Canadian territory continued to serve as a crucial resource base for sustaining the war effort, resulting in the eventual subjugation of the country. By 2077, the annexation of Canada was complete, marking the cessation of the nation's existence. The provinces, now under American military occupation, transitioned into U.S. territories, subject to political and military control, but lacking autonomous state or commonwealth status. Amidst escalating violence, security detachments clad in combat armor were dispatched to quell any signs of resistance from the Canadian population. Protesters, rioters, and members of the resistance movement were met with lethal force, with orders to shoot on sight. The annexation was met with mixed reactions even within the military ranks. While some viewed it as a criminal act, others embraced it as a necessary measure. The formalization of the annexation ushered in open warfare between opposing forces across the former Canadian territory, with the Yukon emerging as one of many battlegrounds, alongside Anchorage in the resource wars. Despite widespread outcry, the military campaign pressed forward. Propaganda played a crucial role in shaping public perception of the annexation, comic series like Tales from the Front and cartoons such as Armor Ace and the Power Patrol served to glorify US occupation forces while demonizing Canadian resistance. Following the collapse of global societies and borders after the Great War, a portion of the surviving Canadian population ventured southward into what had once been the United States. Some embarked on this journey in search of new opportunities and fortunes, while others were drawn by the prospect of goods flowing northward from regions like New California. One of these survivors is Marge LaBarge, the owner of the Cocoa Weef Mine in Fallout 2, who was born in Canada on the edge of Lake LaBarge. In the former Yukon Territory. Dane, a servitor of the Children of the Cathedral in Fallout 1, believes he is from Penticton, British Columbia, although he's not entirely certain. Dave Handy, one of the hubologists in Fallout 2, also hails from Canada. He made the decision to journey to San Francisco after watching a movie featuring Vicky Goldman and subsequently falling in love with her. The Northwestern Territories of Canada would have been explored in the cancelled Fallout Extreme game, featuring locations such as the Montauk Preserve and the Great Convocation, with factions like the Inuits and Montauk Native Americans. The city of Vancouver is depicted in a concept art for Project V13, showcasing a ruined city street with advertisements for its SkyTrain and C-Bus. In the Pit DLC, Asher, Lord of the Pit, mentions a city up north called Ronto, which could potentially be a reference to Toronto, a city in Canada. One of the most interesting aspects of Canada's lore in the Fallout series is the depiction of a giant death ray firing at Earth in the Mothership Zeta DLC. Apparently, the death ray hits Algonquin Provincial Park in Ontario, Canada, resulting in the complete annihilation of the area. The survivalist's rifle was manufactured in a pre-war firearms factory located in Ontario, Canada. Prior to the Great War, this facility was taken over by the United States Armed Forces. The rifle's stock contains carvings with the word stop, or arrêt, French for stop, indicating that US troops were also deployed in Quebec. In Fallout 3, players can discover pre-war letters from vault to residents informing them of rejection and suggesting seeking shelters and vaults located in the newly annexed Canada, revealing the presence of vaults there. The sales figures for Sunset Sarsaparilla, including data for Canada, are displayed on an infograph poster within the company's headquarters in New Vegas. 
In Fallout Tactics, players can encounter a special event involving a group of hobbyists known as the Canadian Invasion Recreationists. This group engages in a recreation of the United States' annexation of Canada, with plans to recreate events like the Uprising of Edmonton. This uprising was a rebellion by supporters of the Canadian resistance movement during the annexation, occurring in the city of Edmonton, Alberta. Clarice, a character appearing in the special event, suggests that there is strong evidence indicating that the Canadian army wore pink uniforms. Another random encounter in Fallout Tactics is called Canadian Invasion, where a hostile group refers to others as Canadian scum and accuses Canada of starting the Great War. Engaging in combat, they assert their intent to invade once more. Additionally, another random encounter shows two Canadian resistance groups, the CPF and PFC, engaged in a heated argument over Canada's future. Notably, each group features a maple leaf on their respective flags. Lastly, when speaking to Cass about John Baptiste Cutting, she makes fun of his name, saying it sounds Canadarian. Jean Baptiste? Sounds like someone got knocked out of the good book so hard his name broke. Either that, or it's Canadarian or some such. The countries of the Middle East were involved in a decade-long conflict with the European Commonwealth, centered around their dwindling oil reserves. While ultimately emerging victorious, their triumph was short-lived, as their own oil reserves became depleted. In the aftermath of the conflict, the Middle Eastern nations laid in ruins, scarred by small-scale nuclear exchanges during the war. This devastation rendered the region exceptionally challenging to inhabit, particularly in the wake of the Great War, which further exacerbated the already crippled infrastructure resulting from the Euro-Middle Eastern War. One of these countries, Israel, saw its city of Tel Aviv completely destroyed, dealing a crippling blow to the nation. It's unknown if there were any survivors in the country after the Great War. The city of Jerusalem is mentioned by Joshua Graham. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it even to the foundation. Egypt just like Israel, Egypt likely lies in ruins, although there is limited information available regarding the post-war state of the country. Smiley in Fallout 76 has some dialogue about Egypt, mentioning the ancient pyramids. Ever been to Egypt and seen the ancient pyramids? Lorenzo Cabot in Fallout 4 supposedly hired a team from Egypt in 1894 in the city of Suez to assist in the excavation of the lost city of Ubar. Additionally, Jack Cabot references Egypt, alongside other ancient civilizations such as Sumer and Assyria. In Fallout 2, the great Ananias boasts of possessing a genuine Egyptian mummy, which he charges people to view. However, it is revealed that the supposed mummy is actually Woody, a ghoul from Gecko, known for his habit of falling asleep in odd places. A town crier in the den, employed by Ananias, refers to the mummy as the Queen of Nile. Moreover, the Nile River is mentioned in Book 2 of the epic poem Paradise Lost, found on a terminal in the underworld. The production of the pre-war film Empire on the Nile is featured on the Shoot for the Stars scoreboard. Gilda Brasco also mentions it. Keith and I first met when we acted together in Empire on the Nile. It was a period piece, huge production budget. He played Mark Antony, and I, of course, played Cleopatra. Ooh, how I hated that black hair, though. In the Mistress of Mystery comic book series, the main character embarks on a journey to Egypt to defeat the cult of the Unseen Seer. And Moira Brown in Fallout 3 mentions the Library of Alexandria. Egypt is also alluded through the character Set, who oversees Necropolis. In ancient Egypt mythology, Set, or Seth, was initially the god of desert, darkness, evil, and chaos. Given his domain over the shadowy town of Necropolis, Seth's portrayal aligns fittingly with this mythological reference. This association is also reflected in his personality. While not entirely evil, he tends to display aggressive tendencies. I'm gonna eat you up and be singing that happy tummy song. I got that Hey, bitter me. Oman. 
The country is mentioned in Lorenzo Cabot's journals in Fallout 4, where in the year 1894, he traveled to the city of Salala in Oman to begin his search for the lost city of Ubar, journeying near the Wadi Adam and venturing into the Rub al Khali sand desert. Turkey there are only a couple of small references to Turkey. In the Fallout 4 side quest out in left field, players can encounter a baseball relic bearing the signature of Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, known as the father of the Turks, the founder and first leader of modern Turkey. In Fallout New Vegas, the NCR commanding officer stationed in Camp Forlorn Hope, Major Joseph Palatli, has a very common Turkish last name, Palatli. Also, Polatli is a municipality and district of Ankara province in Turkey. In the Far Harbor DLC, a terminal at Cliff's Edge Hotel mentions a traditional Turkish spa, and a Pioneer Scout Camp terminal entry in Fallout 76 mentions the ancient Trojan city of Troy, which was located in modern-day Turkey. The weapon shish kebab in the Fallout series is named after the traditional Turkish dish shish kebab, which typically consists of meat threaded on a skewer and grilled. Cape Verde Cape Verde, an island nation situated off the coast of West Africa in the Central Atlantic Ocean, is mentioned in a terminal entry found in Sanctuary Hills, where Nora discovers information about Corsino Silva, a 23-year-old resident of Roxbury with Cape Verdean heritage. He stands accused of armed robbery at Slocum's Joe Coffee Shop. Despite the charges, Nora believes in his innocence and suspects he's being framed. Congo in Vault 118, a display plaque claims that Ezra Parker heroically rescued a Congolese tribe, known as the Abadubo, from a tiger assault, a feat that supposedly earned him a collection of pygmy skulls as gratitude. This narrative is entirely fabricated, as tigers are not indigenous to Africa. Additionally, it is revealed that the skulls are made of plastic, further discrediting the story. In Fallout 76, a love note makes mention of the Congo, a country that the author claims to have seen. Also, the Congo is referenced in the song Civilization, which appears on Appalachian and Diamond City Radio. Morocco the only mention of the country is in Fallout 76, where on a cut paper note titled Potato Eating Contest Winners, it is stated that Brian McLaren won first place at the Summersville Potato Festival Contest with his Moroccan-inspired potato salad. Tanzania this country also only has one mention. The entomologist's exam at the Pioneer Scout Camp in 76 offers Tanzania as the incorrect answer to a question about ants. Ethiopia. In the song In a Shanty in Old Shantytown, Emperor Haile Selassie is mentioned. Julie enlightens her listeners on Appalachia Radio about his history as the former ruler of Ethiopia. In case you were wondering, Haile Selassie was actually a ruler in Ethiopia way back when. <laughs> Don't let anyone tell you listening to the radio is a waste of time. The United States. Given that all of the Fallout games are set in the former United States, I'll keep the description of the country brief. In the Fallout timeline, the United States emerged as a technologically advanced global superpower, rivaled only by China. As the resource wars erupted in 2052, the United States intensified its control over the dwindling fossil fuel reserves and other vital resources in North America. This led to the invasion of Mexico and the annexation of Canada. Meanwhile, nuclear exchanges in the Middle East, coupled with the devastating Euro-Middle Eastern War, prompted the U.S. federal government to initiate Project Safe House in 2054. This ambitious endeavor aimed to construct fallout shelters capable of safeguarding a portion of the American population in the event of a nuclear conflict. vault Corporation secured the contract, setting in motion this massive national defense project. In 2066, in desperation, the Chinese military launched an invasion of Alaska in an attempt to seize its oil reserves. This conflict lasted for over a decade. Ultimately, the United States, with its advanced technology and power armor, successfully repelled the Chinese force. However, these efforts proved futile, as on October 23, 2077, the Great War commenced, sealing the fate of the country. The fallout from the nuclear devastation decimated American society as a whole 
leading to the collapse of the United States, as it was previously known. Abandoned by their leaders, who had gone into hiding, survivors began rebuilding on their own, establishing small settlements and towns, such as Shady Sands and Megaton. Eventually, larger entities emerged, such as the New California Republic and Caesar's Legion. The environment suffered irreversible damage, with radiation affecting plants, animals, and humans alike, with some areas in the country totally uninhabitable. For better or worse, much of the Old World technology survived the Great War, ranging from nuclear-powered Mr. Handys to laser pistols and plasma rifles, and even power armor. When utilized correctly, these technologies have helped certain communities in post-war America not only to survive but also thrive. The remnants of the US military persist in the form of the Brotherhood of Steel, albeit with altered objectives. And the pre-war US government, or rather the deep state operating within it, continue to endure as the Enclave. And that's all the countries mentioned in the Fallout universe. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and thanks for watching.